And everyone this time and rises back with more deadly permission to a blessing in disguise. Back a sack. Oh. <laughs> I just love the look of glistening green grass. You know the green I'm talking about. <laughs> Moist with sprinkler water, reflecting the radiance of the sun. In that regard, Louisiana's grass is in a class of its own. <laughs> just picture it. On a clear summer day, a cold beer in one hand, gazing out from your porch onto the garden you're so proud of. This is the life. Doesn't get much better than this. That's how you feel. A well-kept garden and a cold beer be the ultimate combination. They go hand in hand, just like hot dogs and sporting events. But that grass... It's, it's got, got a, bit a bit of a nerve, nerve to it. It doesn't, it doesn't matter, matter how many times you cut it down. It'll, it'll always, always keep coming back. And turn, turn your eyes away for a bit. <laughs> and, that's and that's when it'll really sprout. Up, up until last week, week your, your garden, garden was, was perfectly pruned and balanced. Symmetrical and pristine. pristine. But, but you, you wake, wake up, up the next morning, morning and, and you can't even stand to look at what it's become. That's, That's why, why people work so hard to cut, cut their grass. Like, like it's some ordeal they've, they've been tasked been with by the big man in the sky. sky. Oh. <laughs> and it never ends. Understand me, Zach. If you, you want to stop, stop cutting your grass now, you need to either submit to its growth or force it to wither. That's, That's all humans can really do. Hard work never really gets us anywhere in the big picture. Nothing but wasted efforts. You following me here? Now just be honest with yourself. Be honest, Francis Zack Morgan. Oh, there's Kaysen, the big bad. Zach, so we meet again. Such a touching reunion. Like a little boy who was given up for adoption, finally reuniting with his true parents. Uh, look, even little Willie here is beside himself with joy. Casey! Oh dear. <laughs> Damn it! I'm gonna... Kill you! <laughs> oh, what the hell? He's hallucinating. <laughs> hey, let her go! What the hell's gotten into you? <laughs> Gotten into him. <sighs> that should do it. <sighs> well, no turning back now. How should we clean this up? I'm searching the room. Pure insanity. But I why did you come here, Aaliyah? 
Remember the real reason you decided to investigate Morgan's house in the first place. We came here to find a missing girl. All right, let's go, 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 man. Okay. Come on, Agent Jones. I know you're hiding something. Uh, what are you talking about? You've been watching him for four and a half years, haven't you? Can you really stand here and tell me that you never saw a single one of the strange signs I'm picking up on now? Uh, what signs? Deadly premonitions. Preparations for kidnapping or terrorist activities. Sexual depravity, violent tendencies, self-mutilation. Or even just contacting a specific person periodically. Nope. Nada. He doesn't fit any of that. You think I'd really ignore something that obvious? I may be a schlub, but I'm still an FBI agent. Then why didn't you do anything about this room? Or did you merely choose to ignore his abnormal proclivities? You want to know what I did? I did my damn job! End of story! I was outside the entire time. How do you expect me to notice a room like this from out there? It's as simple as that. At least it was until you dragged me into this whole mess. Don't blame me just because your big investigation ended up leading nowhere. Then tell me the truth. After seeing this room, can you really say that man is in his right mind? He kept this room a total secret from you for over four and a half years. No normal human is capable of such a feat. Only a true genius or a true monster. Can you really guarantee that he won't try anything if we just let him go here? Well, uh... Then you need to help me. Find some sort of evidence that we can use to make him reveal what he's plotting. Okay, okay. Why do you think Jethro here survived? Why? I mean, doesn't he look like the kind of guy who'd die first in a horror movie? He married into the Clarkson family. He didn't possess Clarkson blood, so he had nothing to do with Helena Doman's plan. The blood purge thing? But if that was all there was to it, then Helena Doman wouldn't have killed anyone but Clarkson's, right? Yet a ton of the Clarkson gang members died, along with Sheriff Woods. <sighs> Doesn't add up. She did whatever it took to achieve her goals. She'd kill if the plan required it. But killing people outside of the Clarkson family was never a priority. Her ultimate goal was to cut off the Clarkson bloodline. Maybe he was always meant to be an assistant to the goddess of fertility. What, like a servant? He was the kind of person who was most in his element when he had someone to serve. Even afterwards, he let Patricia take over the estate while he became her assistant. As soon as he settled into his role, the townspeople started to respect him. Now they practically revere him, and he's even earned himself a nickname. One-armed Danny. So you think his life played out exactly the way Professor R planned it to go? Talk about tragic. Right. Finally, the photo of Patricia. I was so positive. But she isn't here. There is something about this room, though. Agent Jones, what do you think? Me? I'm not as smart as you. Why are you even asking me? Are you hiding something? <laughs> of course not. Knock it off. Me? Hiding something? <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Come on. I got nothing to hide. <sighs> I thought I would find answers in this room. I thought that Patricia would be here. But I was wrong. This room is only filled with photos of people related to the case. 
and the handiwork of a madman. Feels like I'm wandering through a heavy mist. Why is Morgan showcasing those women's photos? And that bed. Oh, we gotta investigate all of them. If you loved someone from the bottom of your heart, would you ever be able to marry someone else? Or kill for them? Whoa, uh, what are we talking about? I never heard of any kind of motive like that in any other murder case. I just keep feeling like we're being fed a story that he made up in his mind. <sighs> True. Honestly, without having experienced what that's like, I can't really say what I'd do. But I'd never try and force love to happen, if it didn't seem like it was meant to be. There are 3.5 billion women on this planet. There's got to be more than one specific person who anyone can fall deeply in love with, right? But what if we were talking about pizza, not women? You just discovered the perfect ultimate pizza. But you aren't allowed to take even a single bite unless you kill someone for the cook. Have you ever loved someone with all your heart? What kind of person do you take me for? That's my line. The one who took her in after the incident was Daniel Clarkson. The next in line to succeed the Clarkson family. He's the one that ended up raising her from that point onwards. Isn't fate strange? In the end, two people who were completely unrelated by blood ended up inheriting that house. Yeah, you're right. But sometimes I wonder, what is family anyway? Go back far enough, we're all strangers to one another. We're talking countless generations, marriages and birth, you know. Humans love to deify the rules they create. It's almost like that's been an unwritten law from the very start. Why did Lise have to die first? Holy moly, is that a tree? Oh. <sighs> what is this? Oh, you gotta be kidding me. This room paints such a bizarre picture. But upon closer look, I can see some strange sort of pattern to it all. Was Morgan trying to recreate something with all this? If so, there must be a reason for all of these weird and hideous things. Wait. Galena Clarkson went to California to become an actress. But things never took off for her, so she eventually returned home. Then she murdered her own daughter and ended up like this. Where did she go wrong? She did manage to appear in a few movies, right? Not as any characters with actual names. And never with much clothes on. So that's the only value they saw in her, huh? Sorry, that was insensitive. It's an everyday occurrence in that world. She was also bullied a lot. Bullied? How? They'd cut up her costumes, her scripts, and even her own clothes. Everywhere she went. Then, after three years of that, her stylist chopped off a chunk of her hair. By accident. Are you kidding me? I did a little investigating on this. In the end, a self-titled Big Cheese producer tricked her. 
She almost ended up going into porn. <sighs> Not hard to imagine what would have happened after that. One witness said that after returning to Lucare, she refused to use scissors to cut anything. When Helena Doman returned home, someone must have let her inside. You think that was her brother-in-law, Daniel? I don't know. <sighs> well, alligators did chomp his arm off. He probably had it in for old man PJ, too. But, you know, I don't think he had anything to do with this. Why not? You're making it out to be more complicated than it really is. That's always the problem with people like you. Too smart for your own good. Just get to the point. <sighs> Professor R marched straight through the front door to the mansion. She arrived right at her destination using the quickest route possible without having to undergo a single security check. I know. My question is, how was she able to do that? Because she's family. It doesn't matter if PJ disowned her. He never stopped loving his son. A father would never abandon his child, no matter how much they failed to fulfill his expectations. That's what being a parent is all about. Don't look at me like that. I know, I know, I don't have a son myself, but I have a father. He's still back in my hometown, managing the printing plant my grandfather started. He'll be turning 80 soon. He wanted me to take over the place, but as you can see, I'm out here. But I know how this whole thing works. Even though I haven't seen him in forever, the minute I go home, he'll welcome me with warm, open arms. What's that? A hunting trophy. A brown bear. With a dragonfly eye patch. Why is it smoking a cigar? It's probably supposed to represent Philip J. Clarkson's body. And the elk is? Helena Doman. So that's why it's got such good taste in fashion. And this one is Galena Clarkson? Why did he want to line up corpses that were killed in different places, all together in a single room? Red... seeds? Yeah, uh, you sure it's okay to press that? Won't know until we try. Hey, hey, it's Woodstock. Look, a peace sign. Love and peace, man. Even I can figure out what this is from. It's Jimi Hendrix, Janis Joplin, Grateful Dead, and Led Zeppelin. But I shouldn't have to explain it to a music nut like you, right? That isn't a peace mark. It's upside down. Tree. You don't a, need to be a music nut to see that. Represents the red tree. Well, who says that's the top part? If you're looking from Lisa's head, this is the top part, making it a big, fat peace mark. No, this is the ground. Where's your proof? The red seeds. Seeds go in the ground, right? That makes this wall the bottom. Lisa's head is clearly at the top. Period. <sighs> also, Agent Jones. Led Zeppelin never played at Woodstock. He's representing a human with a hunting trophy made from an animal. I feel like I'm looking at a piece of modern art done in really bad taste. More, more investigating. Anna Graham. The first victim of the Greenvale case. Her body was found hanging from a tree, 
like a goddess being worshipped in a sanctuary. Meanwhile, Lise Clarkson was found on the bank of a river in an area that had been fashioned into an altar. The person who gruesomely ended the life of that young woman must be brought to justice. I completely agree. They both still had their whole lives ahead of them. The Lucare case and the Greenvale case. According to my investigation, the one key that links both cases is Francis Zack Morgan. But if we look at the cases from his point of view, we see one more connection. The Red Seeds are also present in both cases. I believed that he was the one who brought them to both towns. But maybe... No, never mind. <laughs> sure seems like our friend Daniel here was just destined to suffer. He crossed the entire continent and married into the Clarkson family, all for the sake of the woman he loved. But then the love of his life became a drug addict and ended up murdering their very own daughter. And she too was murdered as part of her big brother's conspiracy. Finally, in order to prove that he could take responsibility for the family, he gave up his right arm to his father-in-law, who got blown to bits soon afterwards. And to add insult to injury, all the inheritance went to PJ's secret heir. If I had to go through all that, I'm pretty sure I'd go crazy. I don't know. What do you mean? He found someone he loved so much, he moved across the entire continent just to be with her. That's beautiful. It also seems that he was eventually able to make an identity for himself and Lu Kare as well. After I found his daughter's body, I interrogated him for a bit. When I told him we were gonna do an autopsy on her body, he didn't react violently in any way. I remember him looking relieved and tired. Kind of like someone who'd just woken up from a coma. He was taught how to rule as a child, never confided in anyone, and married for purely political reasons. Then he prospered so much that he became powerful enough to rule an entire town on his own. But in the end, his own child betrayed him and ended his entire clan in a series of violent deaths. If that was your life, how would you look back on it? Yeah, beats me. I wasn't born into a rich family, nor was I ever taught how to rule. And for what it's worth, I've also never knocked up a young ex-actress. But I guess the one thing we can say is that any good life needs balance. Get too hung up on one thing and you lose sight of everything else. And if you betray someone, you'll get betrayed too. If someone thinks they can step all over people and then live out the rest of their life in peace, they're fooling themselves. We always get to see how those people end up in our line of work. In the end, they die horrible deaths. That is why pizza is the only thing I trust. Pizza never betrays you. Oh, I'm not with the pizza again for crying out loud. All he ever goes on about is the pizza. She planned a string of murders all in order to restore the Clarksons to their former glory, right? Yeah. According to Morgan's story. Matches up with the files, too. But the only proof of that is the confession she privately gave to Morgan just before she died. Galena Clarkson was also murdered immediately after she confessed. Don't you think it's all a little too convenient? Well, story-wise, yeah. And the sacrifices. None of the FBI's official records contain an example of an actual human sacrifice. Aside from the cases that Francis Zack Morgan handled, that is. There are tons of examples of animal sacrifice, though. And remember the witch hunts back in the Middle Ages? Meaning? Meaning, there are always exceptions to the rule. And Morgan alluded to the existence of some sort of journal, right? I think he said he read it in Professor R's lab. If we could find that, maybe this would all become easier to swallow. The report didn't mention anything about a journal. And if it truly did exist, it surely would have been submitted as evidence. Unless he tried to cover it up on purpose. Or... 
Unless the journal never existed in the first place. Exactly. This case took place in Lucare, and centered around the Clarksons. Oppressive authority, cross purposes, madness, and love. But Katrina took the truth along with many innocent lives and buried it all at the bottom of the swamp. But there's one truth that can never be washed away. This all started with the death of a young girl. Indeed, indeed. Why did she believe what Professor R told her? The whole blood purge story. There's no way anyone in their right mind would ever believe that. You got a point. No matter how badly all the bullying must have broken her heart. I just find it too hard to believe. Don't you? Yeah. But you shouldn't think too hard about it. Why not? Human beings don't make sense. We always do things that can't be explained with common logic. Especially when it concerns our parents, children, and siblings. Mm-mm. That doesn't satisfy me. No matter how irrational an action may be, I want to know exactly why that person made such an irrational decision. Otherwise, what hope do we have? You're never going to be in a situation where everything makes perfect sense. Just stop sticking your nose so deeply into everything. That's my advice, as an old guy who's lived twice as long as you. You and I are nothing alike. You decided to give up on your life and spend the rest of your time on Earth, sitting around and playing Sudoku. <sighs> Everyone thinks that the principal thing to the tree is the fruit. But in point of fact, the principal thing to it is the seed. Now I know why Lise Clarkson was murdered first. Lisa's death was Professor R having second thoughts. According to Morgan, her plan was to perform parricide and filicide, then commit suicide. Those were the three deaths necessary to complete the ritual, remember? Which means she technically could have killed Patricia first. That would have been the best way to delay any interference from the Clarksons themselves. The reason she didn't kill Patricia first is because Lena was actually following a different plan inside her own mind. Or perhaps she merely changed her plan as she followed through with it. At some point, new emotion started to take root within her. She had second thoughts about something. And in order to shake those off, she used Galena to kill Lise first. In order to cut off any possible escape. But that only made her plan move ahead quicker than she could have ever imagined. Which forced her to rush right up to the end with those misgivings always in the back of her mind. Huh? Wait, hold on. Yeah, you lost me. What are you talking about? In other words, at some point, Helena Doman decided that she wanted to make Patricia the next heir. The blood purge wasn't for the goddess of fertility. It was for their daughter, Patricia. Wait, are you saying Helena knew from the start that Sheriff Woods would die with Candy? That's the only explanation I can think of. Huh. Remember... This is only assuming that everything Morgan told us was true. Until I can trust that man, this is all nothing more than conjecture. Uh, considering how insane this all is, it sounds perfectly believable to me. <laughs> Francis Zack Morgan. Remember me? Oh, cat got your tongue. Understood. You know why I'm here, don't you? Surely you must know what this means. To commemorate our reunion, allow me to give you another oracle. The contract, once signed, 
will last for eternity, but only in the presence of true love. Did you hear that? Good. It's been a while since I felt this. You know, there's hardly anyone in this era who can see me like you can. And they've been dropping like flies since you first came to see me. Breaks my heart. Questions for me? Excellent. You pass. You haven't changed, Francis Zach Morgan. But that question isn't for me to answer. Go and see it with your own eyes. Oh, time's up. We'll have to finish this during our next reunion. Who's <laughs> ringtone is that? Is it even a ringtone? Oh, it's his ringtone. Oh, this is bad. How bad? Agent Jones, what is this referring to? Avery Smith kidnapped Patricia Clarkson. Oh, holy moly. Escaped. My goodness. He's a bad guy too, is he? Avery Smith? The vault manager? Why would he kidnap Patricia? Tell me what's going on right now. Well... Answer me, Jones. I made a deal with Morgan back when he took me to the bathroom. What? What? Morgan said something to me. If we want to find Patricia, we need to look at Avery Smith. Have you lost your mind? <sighs> what he said made sense. Ever since 2005, Avery's been working deep inside that cold storage warehouse. He was also arrested in the past for getting too friendly with Lise Clarkson. And after Katrina, he apparently worked on renovating the warehouse for free. What if that allowed him to freely modify the warehouse as he pleased? That would explain why her body remained missing for 14 whole years. Then I did a little check and found out that he never went back to work after Christmas vacation ended. So what? Why would you trust him? Uh, I don't. I just decided it was worth investigating, that's all. So, I sent two agents to Avery's house without telling anyone. I just called in a favor from an old friend in the New Orleans branch. No one gave you clearance for that. You think you can just... Uh, but what if Morgan's telling the truth? If he is, we're both going to look like total clowns. Clowns who went barging into a former agent's house on completely unfounded suspicions. HQ will have a field day with us. They'll string us up as the two dumbest agents to have ever graced the field. I just wanted to take some precautions. And besides, if he is lying, it's still no skin off our backs, right? If things work out, we'll end up solving a difficult case that's been driving everyone crazy. Imagine that. You and me, just the two of us, solving a case like this. I'll be able to jump ship on this crappy job, and you'll be able to freely investigate all things San Rouge, just like you've always wanted. Besides, you know that Morgan is Director Abraham's favorite. Even if we get into some sort of trouble, if Morgan testifies to Abraham's for us, we'll totally be in the clear. I don't care. This isn't the way things are supposed to be done. Well, I'm sorry, but I had no other choice. You were so engrossed in this, and come on, you know how I am. Besides, 
Saving the hostage should take priority above all else. There's no time for squabbling. We need to find Avery Smith, no matter what it takes. <clears throat> but how? Uh, well... Thanks to your heroic maneuvers, we just lost our suspect. I know, but... I know how to find him. I should be able to see the other world, the way I am now. Just let me go, please. Morgan? It's okay, my fairy. I know I can convince them. Holy moly, man. I don't have much time left. I'm pretty sure that's why I can see the other world now. I'd lost that sense ever since the Greenvale incident. But it's back now. Please, will you just trust me? Come on, Simon. You'll trust me, won't you? Uh, what? No, Agent Jones. Remember the warning I gave you at the very beginning? You can't let him take control of the conversation. Yeah, I, I know. I know. Please, Halia Davis, let me go. This is our case to finish. No, you aren't an agent anymore. But you don't know how to find him. Neither of you ever could. Oh, I'll find him. I swear on my pride as an active agent that I won't give up until I do. That won't get you anywhere. It's beyond you. Shut up. You think we can't find him, but you can. Just how stupid do you think we are? If you want us to believe you, then it's about time you showed us some proof. Hey, Belle. Your hypothesis was pretty much on the mark. Last week, I went back to Lucare. Then I bought a used car and got on a train in Trenton. But not for the reason you think. I wasn't stalking Patricia. And I'd never try to kidnap her. Then why would you go there? Why would you risk so much, especially since you knew that you were under surveillance? Because, once again, I'm chasing Saint Rouge. Saint Rouge? Even after I quit the FBI, I continued to study the red trees on my own. And now, I've come to the conclusion that those red seeds and San Rouge both come from the same roots. I also found proof that someone's inherited the original recipe. That's why I flew to Lucare, to confirm my suspicions. But I was more powerless than I ever could have imagined. I couldn't move like I used to. No badge, no gun. So, after wandering aimlessly around town, I swallowed down my torment and my weakness and left. You expect me to believe that? I know you've got it in you. What's that supposed to mean? You found Lise Clarkson's body. The one thing I never did. And only a few days after discovering the body, you came to visit me. You should be fully capable of discerning that what I'm telling you is the truth. Talking much about oneself can also be a means to conceal oneself. You can't trick me. Holy moly, how we're gonna convince her. You said that she was the mastermind behind the tragedies in Lucare. That her convictions about the Clarkson bloodline are what started it all. Yes, that's right. She instigated her younger sister into killing her own niece. Then she committed suicide immediately after killing her father, hoping that Sheriff Woods would be able to complete her plan. How could one call such an unpredictable series of events a plan? And as we saw, Sheriff Woods chose a fate that was completely different from what she envisioned. No, he didn't. 
In the end, things went exactly as she planned. What do you mean? At a certain point, she realized that her plan was wrong, so she tried to adjust things, using me as a pawn. But then, the unexpected happened. She and I both underestimated what Avery was capable of. That's why I'm here right now trying to convince you, in order to save Patricia's life. If your story is true, then why did Avery Smith kidnap Patricia? Patricia resembles Lise. I even got them confused once. And Lise reported being stalked by a ten-foot man. That's Avery Smith? Exactly. But he's only 6'7 at best. His physical characteristics don't match the person you're talking about. I once concluded the very same thing, but now I know. That was definitely Avery. He protected Lisa's body for the past 14 years, until you discovered his sleeping beauty. So after losing Lisa's body, he kidnapped Patricia as a replacement? Th that's ridiculous. Is that really what you think happened? Even if Avery did possess that sort of mentality, it doesn't make sense. If Lise was really that important to him, he would have tried to steal her back. Not now, maybe. But certainly after she was buried. <laughs> would you be able to go on worshipping a goddess who had been defiled by so many hands? That ice was a barrier. A shield that separated the divine from our world. When I first met P.J. Clarkson, how did I feel? I just thought, oh, so this is what it feels like to be in the presence of a truly powerful person. He had a very unique aura, as if he had surpassed the realm of good and evil. It's the kind of feeling you get when you come face to face with a legendary actor or an influential politician. So I was also able to sense the deep darkness that trailed behind him. The brighter the light, the darker the shadow. The more he shined, the more the people around him had to squint to shut out the light. The heat was just so intense that it forced people to shut up their hearts in order to keep from burning up. But Patricia was different. She greeted travelers with a warm embrace like the real sun. I'm going to save her, even if I need to walk through a bullet to get there. Indeed, indeed. How do we get out, though? You said that someone inherited the Saint Rouge recipe, didn't you? Is that someone Avery Smith? It has to be. Avery used to help Professor R do research in secret. What? Well, that wasn't in the report. I only realized it just now. The moment I spilled my coffee on the floor. Avery revealed that he was helping with some sort of research. <sighs> but at the time, I let his confession go in one ear and out the other. Now that I look back on it, I realize it was solid proof that he was helping her produce Saint Rouge. What makes you think that? He had free access to the deepest parts of the cold storage warehouse. Oh. Wait. Uh, meaning... Saint Rouge needs to be produced in an extremely cold environment. Exactly. Aaliyah Davis. You already considered this possibility, didn't you? That's why you investigated the cold storage warehouse as soon as you got to Lucare, in order to locate where Saint Rouge was being made. Then, you came across Lisa's body by pure chance. Melvin wasn't the Fool King. What? Many different characters pop up in Lena's journal, and I mistook one of them for someone else. What are you talking about? After Simon hit me and I fainted, I had a dream. Now I'm convinced. 
I'm the Fool King. The Fool King was always meant to be an outsider who suddenly arrived in Lucare. And the man she felt a need to eliminate wasn't me, but Avery. Lena realized her plan was on the verge of falling apart. She also guessed that I would be able to save Patricia from Melvin. The one worry that remained in her heart was leaving Patricia behind and how her life would play out from that point on. Especially since she would be left behind with Avery, the large, childlike man who's beyond anyone's control. She wrote that journal entry hoping that I, the Fool King, would be capable of stopping Avery. And she wrote it in a specific way in order to try and rouse me to action. Lena and Melvin both entrusted me with their daughter. So please, just let me go. It's my duty to protect her. Who do you think benefited most from the Greenvale case? <sighs> No one benefited from it. Many lives were lost. That's all. You really believe that? Everyone who survived was overcome with sadness. Scarred for life. Without exception? Without exception. Isn't that right, my fairy? I feel like you're the one person who benefited from the case. You were able to add a new chapter to your stunning career and earned unshakable trust from the Chief. That's what allows you to go on using his intel network as you please, even though you're retired. Are you seriously suggesting that? Sickness is destroying my body. I feel like I'm on the verge of losing my mind. Yet, somehow, I'm unable to forget the cases connected to those seeds whittling down what's left of my life, chasing them. You really think I'm doing all this for nothing but self-interest? Is that really what you're saying? Indeed, indeed. I understand what you're trying to say. But it's too perfect. It's too perfect, just like that report of yours. How could you come to such a detailed conclusion after spending years shut up in this room? It doesn't make sense. The only possible explanation is that you're bending the narrative in the direction you want it to go. Why do you think I left the field for two years after Greenvale? That case cost me not only my best friend, but also my special talent. I never thought I'd lose something like that. But ever since then, I've been unable to solve cases using that method. <gasps> Metaphysical offender profiling! I tried everything I could think of to regain my lost talent, but it never came back to me. That's why I quit working for the FBI. And without anywhere else to go, I simply spent my days seeking truth, searching for an answer I'd never find. <sighs> so, time continued to cruelly pass me by. Until finally, a disease started eating away at my body. I thought it was all over for me. <coughs> but about half a year ago, I finally reached my conclusion. Everything started with the red seeds. He and I encountered these seeds long before we reached Greenvale. Under the seething, mind-melting sun of Louisiana. Then, for some reason, in the beginning of December, I finally regained my talent. And instantly, I could see the other world again. Get it? Through allowing the cancer cells to ravage my body, I regained the power to travel to the other side. This is the only answer, Aaliyah Davis. Truth is a surprise. Born from coincidence and an unknown power. And just let him go for crying out loud. He needs to solve the case. You can't do it. You're not good enough. 
two bizarre cases derailed your life. It must have been extremely painful. You have my deepest condolences, but that doesn't put you in the clear. You're still a suspect. A suspect? For what? Patricia isn't here. The murders of Sheriff Melvin Woods and Candy Woods. You gotta be joking. You gotta be joking, man. Their bodies were never recovered. Katrina carried them away, along with many other lives. Aside from that report you wrote, there's nothing that proves your innocence. Hey, let's not jump to conclusions here. Oh, I'm not. I also suspect there's a possibility that he murdered individuals connected to other cases that he's worked on. The Greenvale report bears the same inconsistencies as this one. And both cases are filled with victims whose deaths were never witnessed. Stop. Don't say another word. If you so much as mention her name. If I mention it, then what? You will pay. Indeed, indeed. <sighs> Bell. No. Special Agent Aaliyah Davis. You're exceptionally talented, I admit it. You found Lisa's body, then discovered the red seeds all on your own. You even noticed that there was someone else in this room. You've got amazing intuition. You're a hunter with an extremely keen sense of smell. But you still can't perceive the other world the way you are now. That's all there is to it. Who is that? Simon, look inside that trash can. Huh? The trash can? It's right behind you. Then you'll know for sure that I'm telling the truth. Who is that fairy? <laughs> we told you not to touch the sanctuary! What is this? What's on that receipt? What is it, Agent Jones? F. K. Contact a local agent and have them investigate Avery Smith's home. There are still agents investigating the Lucare area, right? Trust me, that's where Patricia Clarkson is. Trust you? Where's your proof? Ask Aaliyah Davis. Ask her about the name of the person who tipped her off. What do you mean? You're from Chicago. And you love pizza, right? Especially deep dish pizza, smothered in cheese. What does this have to do with pizza? Just ask her. And ask her why she decided to take this case in the first place. Got it? Pizza will never betray you. So you need to trust it, too. But how could you have known that I would come here with her? I didn't. I just bet on you. God damn it. Hey! Tell me what's going on right now, Agent Jones! <clears throat> Holy moly. Thank you, my fairy. Car key, Simon. Let me go. Don't worry. Just trust in the pizza. I'm the anonymous tipper. F. K. It's on the corner of 3rd Street. 69 Pontiac GTO. You've got excellent taste. 
Lend me your gun, too. Agent Jones! Don't you see what you're doing here? This is a severe obstruction of justice. You're violating the FBI code. <laughs> yeah, Aaliyah, I know, but pizza will never betray me. Pizza? Tell Abrahams to prepare a private jet for me at the airport. I know Robert won't turn his back on me. Wait, Morgan, are you serious? The Chief would never lend out a private jet to a civilian like... Like, um... I have to leave you for a bit, my fairy. They'll be fine. They'll figure it all out. Is that Emily, anyway? Holy moly, is that fairy Emily? York, can you hear me? I'm going to go finish the job you started. That makes us even, okay? Hmm. York, she really is a genius agent. She's probably going to end up being an even better agent than we were. She just needs more experience under her belt. She's still only pursuing the world she can see with her naked eye. She needs to experience more frustration. She needs to strengthen herself. <laughs> On the other hand, Simon's much smarter than he looks. No wonder he was able to go on watching us for four and a half years. All that struggling under the surface paid off in the end. <laughs> Do you want to know why he decided to start trusting me? It's simple. It's all because of the name I used to send the tip to the FBI. It's the name of that pizza parlor, the Chicago-style place with those trademarked crimson boxes. Franklin's Kitchen. FK. Yet again. They've got the best deep dish pizza in the area. Both Simon and I love that place. That's why I told him, pizza will never betray you. Will it, York? <laughs> Holy moly, we're here. Uh -oh. oh, doesn't look good, he doesn't look good. Yeah. York, it's almost time. Let's finish this. I'll be there soon. Watch my back, will you? This is going to be my final battle. Oh man, he's gonna die. Holy moly. So I'm this far gone, huh? But unlike 14 years ago, I feel more at home in this world now. Well, I hope he doesn't die, you know? Let's save it first, let's save it. Right, looks like the final mission. Alright, so uh, that'll do it for this part guys. If you enjoyed the video, please like, share and comment. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe and help me rise.